Ciao a tutti, benvenuti e bentornati sul canale YouTube di JustNerd.it Io sono Roberto e oggi parliamo di Zombie Tsunami per 3 6 giocatori edito dalla Lucky Duck Games Dopo la travolgente campagna Kickstarter di Vikings Gone Wild che ha portato a raccogliere 235 mila dollari circa si è conclusa da poco anche la campagna di Zombie Tsunami Nonostante entrambi i giochi siano eh, ispirati a due applicazioni per smartphone, a due giochi per telefono sono completamente diversi il primo è un gioco per giocatori esperti il secondo è invece un gioco molto leggero e quindi ideale sia per concludere una serata impegnativa ma anche per avvicinare altri giocatori ai giochi da tavolo mentre il primo è un gioco rivolto a giocatori con una certa esperienza il secondo è un party game decisamente rivolto a tutti introduttivo molto interattivo per far avvicinare al tavolo da gioco chi di solito è più orientato a svagarsi con le app o i giochi del telefono, anzi questo potrebbe essere il gancio per far sedere queste persone al tavolo, proprio il fatto che è stato ispirato da un'app di un telefono. Inoltre nella campagna è stata sbloccata un'espansione chiamata Zombird che rende il gioco leggermente più tattico e quindi più appetibile anche ai giocatori un po' più esperti. Permette un miglior controllo dell'area e inoltre aggiunge longevità al gioco con l'introduzione di nuove carte strada, mercato e bonus segreto. Adesso vi lascio il tutorial fatto direttamente dall'autore che noi abbiamo tradotto e sottotitolato. Con questo è tutto, ci vediamo alla prossima puntata. Ciao ciao! Hi guys, Vincent from Lucky Duck Games. I want to give you a quick introduction about Zombie Tsunami, uh, how to set it up and what's the spirit behind it. First of all, let's talk about the game. The game is very different from Vikings on One. It is not a strategy game, it is not an optimization game. It is a very light party game uh, where most skill will be social deduction, bluffing, and negotiation, and a lot of zombie rolling. Uh, so I just want to tell you beforehand uh, to cut any expectation from you and your players that this is not an optimization game, this is not a gamer's game, this is something very light. Uh, what do you have in the box? You have zombies, tons of them, they're actually cubes with this one side that has a little face, you have coins, and you have what we call civilians. Uh, the numbers behind is to break ties when someone has the small, when we said the smallest the guy needs to go first, they both go here, turn it around, 15 wins, so he goes first. It's just to break the tie, there's not points. Uh, otherwise it's civilians, coins. Uh, and we have this board, on the one uh, there is six card. The winner of the game is the one who has the most zombies at the end of the third round. Actually, there's three rounds. So there's six cards per round, it means 18 cards. Um, and I'm going quickly on the, on, on the board. Um, every time you go on the board, you get what is written on it. At the beginning, it means that everybody is getting two zombies. So we start with nothing and we all get two zombies, two zombies, two zombies, and two zombies. Um, what you also give to everybody is those uh, voting token, which I will explain on the how to play section. Uh, three different colors, blue, green, and red. When you progress on the board, then you have a coin here. It means that you'll get, everybody will get a coin when they arrive here and then go to the market, which is this phase, okay? Then everybody gets another zombie, then everybody gets another coin here and a market again. Beginning of the next round, everybody gets two, two zombies, you, you, you get the concept. Uh, in terms of setup, we have here two permanent uh, shop cards, uh, which you need to find them in the in this deck, which is uh, the, the the market deck, and they are blue, so you can't you can't lose them. They have this little uh, they have this little uh, don't throw me in the, in the don't discard me uh, uh, sign and say here. The market is very simple. You shuffle. Uh, I think it's 18 or 19 cards that you have in this thing. Shuffle it. And the number of card here is the number of player plus two. I'm setting up a four player game, therefore I have four plus two, six card. Okay, so um, now I need to prepare my, what we call the street deck, basically the 18 card, three times six card that we will have to all go through uh, before the end of the game. To do that, I have two different deck, round one deck and round two and three. How this works first, I'm going to take my round one deck and shuffle it and take six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can discard the others and this is my first round. Okay. For my round two and three, first of all, I want you to search in that deck the bus and the plane. Put them aside and then shuffle the rest 
and make two pi of one, two, three, four, five. And the same as second one of five again. One, two, three, four. So wait, one, two, three, four, five. I have one that I can put on the side. And what I do is I take my bus, put it here, take my plane, put it here. This is gonna be my round three. This is gonna be my round two. I shuffle them, shuffle them. And obviously what I do, put them on the right order. So round one, on top of round two, on top of round three, I have 18 card, which will be uh, my street. We have uh, a card which I haven't talked about, uh, which has this Lucky Duck Games uh, back, uh, which is temporary, by the way, this is all prototype, and which is something that is, should not be shuffled with this street and will be played at the end of the third round. Put it aside, it's called the last jump card, just put it on the right over there, um, and uh, it will be used only at the very end of the game. Finally, there is a seven bonus card. You need to take uh, a very specific set of cards based on the number of players, In generally it's Number of player plus one. We're four player. It's uh, it's five cards, and the rule book tells you exactly which one it should be. I know them by heart. So four player will be the giant lead, the quarterback, the tsunami, the ninja, and the UFO. I will explain you how they work and the how to play. In the setup, all you have to know is that you need to shuffle, and typically one player could take care of that uh, every round. And you just give each player one secret bonus. The fifth one in the case of four player is put on the side and will be reused at the end of the round where everybody will give again their stuff, reshuffle and give back again. This is the setup. This is how, uh, how the game is ready to go. Uh, we all have our two zombies or three tokens, a secret bonus. We have a, a street deck ready. The market is ready. See you in the next video. Let's talk about how to play. Now that you've set up the game, let's go through the meat of the game. So, one more time, the winner of this game is the one who will have the most zombie. We are all in a competitive manner trying to grow the biggest horde of the work, like zombie leaders. Um, and to get zombies, well, we get them on the way through that city um, and through plenty of activities. How does it work? We will go through 18 cards in this matter. I just revealed the first one and there is uh, four types of activity. This first one is a jump. The way it works is that uh, everybody takes their little um, their cubes and basically roll them. This is the way you kind of simulate the zombie trying to jump over that, that stuff. Here, nobody died. But if this zombie ended up like this, it means this, this zombie died and is returned to the supply on the side. Um, this little infinite means that uh, every single one of them would die on that jump. But uh, some of some of those jump, for example, those two card community will kill only two zombies. So this number basically uh, kind of puts a cap on the maximum casualties of zombies you will have uh, during those jump. Um, the next type of activity uh, we have, and basically, and we all play together. Everybody throw, everybody as I said. Then second card. This is a push card. Here it means that it's too big uh, for us to jump over and we need to team up to push it. At this stage of the game, we all have two zombies, or maybe someone has one because maybe one died. Um, which, by the way, if you end up with zero zombie, you always get one back. It's like, it pops out of nowhere. Um, how does it work? We all take this token and we might all discuss, hey, do you guys want to be with me? Do you want to mine? We agree, I'm going to go for green. You could probably take a color and let's say that this guy is, is in the lead. You could basically show this like this. So you can really communicate, negotiate, chat, and ultimately at the end, everybody puts his hand like this and reveal his color. If, uh, for example, if there is enough people in the blue team to match the requirement here, which is four zombies, then that team goes through without penalties. If your team or yourself, if nobody teamed up with you and you got unlucky, is too small for the requirement, then you lose two zombies. If I have two zombies and lose two zombies, technically I lose only one because you always get back to one. Okay, so that's jumping and pushing, basically. Those are the two concepts. Um, the third type of concept is getting either a civilian or a bomb. Um, you always start with the largest, uh, the, the biggest horde of zombies starts, so the player with the most zombies starts, and he either decides to get um, 
a civilian which uh, stays in front of you. And the civilian is nice because it doesn't roll, right? You might have like a big horde at the end of the end like this and do this and like, oh, okay, everybody survived. Oh, this one died. This one doesn't die, right? It's in front of you. It gets transformed into a zombie at the end of every round. So at the end of the round, if I have two civilian, I can discard them and replace them with, uh, actually, no, it's not that I can. I have to discard them and transform them. Okay, but um, you can also in this activity decide not to get a civilian and actually bomb someone. When you bomb someone, you either uh, it it either kills one zombie or every single civilian. So civilians are very powerful because they are kind of risk averse; they don't jump, but they are very uh, fragile and sensible to bombs. Okay. Um, the last type of activity is to choose between a zombie or a coin. There's really no order for that. Uh, everybody picks a coin or a zombie. One thing that's important though is that there is a maximum of two coins per player. So if I already have one and I'm here, I have one and I have this coin, there's no point taking this coin because I get another one here that would be my third one here and I can't keep it. So here typically I will take a zombie. So um, one thing actually we haven't talked about is those two phase. Every time we arrive here, everybody gets a coin and get to go to the market. The first player to choose from the market is the player with the least amount of zombies. If there is an equality, um, we go through that supply, we shuffle it and people flip numbers 10, 11. The one was the highest number is the one who broke that tie and won it. So is the first one uh, we get to choose. And afterwise, we go in a clockwise order, uh, picking the market. There's plenty of options in the market. Uh, here, typically, there is uh, a bomb, which is the same as this one. Uh, this is basically a bomb everyone or bomb everyone I want. Here, this means that you can look at someone's um, a secret bonus, which is the last thing I haven't talked about. But there's plenty of things in there. You can have plus two zombies. You can save two zombies. And this is a little hand that means that you can, that's the only one you can keep in front of you. All of those have to be played immediately unless they have this thing. Plus two uh, civilian, save one zombies. Uh, and those are still zombies. So I'm seeing two zombie or I'm seeing one zombie. But I talked about secret bonuses and uh, this is the last part I haven't explained. So there is seven bonuses because you can play up to six players in the base game. And let's see how they work. In a five, in a four player game, there will be five of them. And here are the five. The UFO tells you that if you own a civilian at the end of the round, you get plus two zombies. On top of obviously your civilian transform into a zombie. So that will be three zombies if you manage to do this. And you can reveal it only at the end of the round. The giant Z, the goal of it is to bomb a civilian successfully. If you do, reveal this card immediately and get two zombies. It will be too easy, and that's why there is a word successfully, because you can't be successful if you actually bomb the quarterback. The quarterback's goal is to get bombed. And how do you get bombed? You get bombed by taking a civilian and pretending to be a UFO. Um, and if you get bombed, then the bomb has no effect. So first of all, it doesn't kill anybody on your side. But on top of that, you can steal two zombies to the person who just attacked you. So you can see how those three guys have to remain together uh, and kind of create some kind of an ecosystem of people uh, who need to be codependent. And there is a lot of like, who am I going to bomb if I'm the giant Z? Or like, how am I going to make someone bomb me? Or like, how am I going to be safe before the end of the turn? There's two more cards called the Tsunami and Ninja. Those two cards... Uh, are meant to be for this uh, negotiation phase. They are kind of the trader during negotiation. The tsunami has to be in the largest group of players. So he's gonna try to look for consensus and say, guys, we all need each other to go through. If he is, in fact, in strictly the largest group of player, he can steal two zombies from his group. It can be one from two player or two from one player. The ninja is also a trader during this uh, negotiation. He wants to be in the smallest group of player or alone. Typically, this guy will be like, okay, he's looking for consensus. We all go green, but secretly at the end, pick the red to try to be alone or like go blind. So guys, I'm not talking to you. I'm picking a color. You have to guess. So, um, so those are the two. The two last one, which plays only at five or six players are the dragon head or the dragon tail. Uh, typically, the head has to find the tail and the tail has to find the head. 
Let's say that I have the head and there is a guy over here. I said, are you the tail? He says, yes, I am. He reveals, I turn two zombies immediately. But if he wasn't, then I need to reveal my card. And that's at immediately then the head, which was someone else as well. You have the head and he is the one making two points, uh, two, sorry, two zombies. So you kind of don't want to go fast. You kind of want to wait for people to reveal their identities um, to, to have the most information and try to guesstimate the best. Once you are done with your three rounds of going through those, uh, all those decks and you yeah, had to jump and push and, and buy stuff in the market, at the end of that last card, um, everybody transform as usual at the end of the round, transform their uh, civilian into zombies. And here comes the last jump. The last jump is an optional activity. You don't have to do it. Let's say that, I don't know, you're in the lead, you have a lot of stuff and you're like, ah, I don't want to risk a last jump to have anybody die. I don't want to play. You don't have to play. But here's the way it works. Everybody wants to play, takes their stuff in their hand, and will split between left hand and right hand how much they want to play, put in this thing. So literally do a blind bidding. Everybody is going to stand their hand the same way they do voting with an amount of zombie in the right hand. They reveal it. Everything in the left hand is safe and will count towards the final score at the end. Uh, but it will not be counted. So let's say I have four on the side that I didn't want to play just to be safe. And I have here six, I have eight guys. Let's say that yet it took nine, this is 10, this is seven. We all roll and I have one guy who died here. So I have to discard it. And I look at how much I have. I have six, I have seven. Let's say that I have seven, this guy has eight and this guy has seven. So the guy who had eight gets three zombie extra because he's the first one, okay? And um, there is two guys with seven each. We need to be uh, basically split between the second and third place. We typically do what we do all the time in the game, which is we turn around two civilians. And I had 10, he has nine. So I'm um, the second, I get two zombies. And the third one gets one zombie. If you have more than three player, the fourth, fifth, fourth, fifth and sixth don't get anything. Uh, and and then and then now you can count to me. You bring your four, you bring everything that you have, survive, and how much you've made. And the one who officially has the most zombies is the winner. If there is uh, an actual tie here, we don't break it up this way. Everybody who's not tied has to say roll, 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 and the people tied have to do a last row. Uh, and the one who survived the most, uh, well, is officially the winner. We thought it would be appropriate with a game that's about throw, throwing zombie dice. Thank you guys. We really hope you enjoy the game um, and have fun with it. Hello guys, Vincent from Lucky Duck here. I'm just going to present you uh, how the Zombird expansion works. And I, um, I ask you to play the game with the Zombird expansion to really get the full grasp of the game. What you get in your box uh, on top of the normal game, uh, it's... A zombie deck, basically, um, and there are birds which we'll look at after. An event deck, which is nine cards. You get uh, actually three shop cards which allow you to buy zombie cards. Uh, there's one here, but you'll get three. And you get a new uh, secret bonus. Obviously, this is all prototype ugly stuff, but um, it's for you to play, which when you bomb successfully a civilian, uh, you actually get two zombie. Okay? So, uh, how does it work? Every, so, it, the, you play the game normally, except that at the beginning of each round, you're going to reveal a new event. There's two kinds of events. Either something to do now, or something that happens during the round. Uh, when it's now, it means that it's people either do it, or don't, but it's now or never. It, those events are optional, and basically are ways for people to gain some bird. For example, this one, show your bonus to the person on your left. It should say on your left. So um, if you decide to show your bonus to the person on your left, then you can get to pick one of those guys. But if you don't, because you don't want to reveal who you are, then it's fine. You don't have to do it, but you just don't gain this, uh, this on bird. For example, this round, uh, succeed your bonus. So if at any point during the, the round you manage to succeed your bonus, you get to pick a zombie bird. 
let's see this round. If during the negotiation phase you actually use the red pill, well, you can get a Zombird. Uh, now, give a zombie to the person on your right. If you do, you get a zombie. If you don't, here's what's funny with this one. If you don't give a zombie to the person on your right, you will end up with two because the person on your, on your left will... Uh, if the person on your left do give, give you a zombie, you actually end up with two. So that's... Now, you, it's a simple jump of two, basically, with up to two death. And if you do so, you actually can claim uh, your zombie bird. This round, if uh, no zombie died during at least one jump, uh, you get to get. Every uh, this round stuff can be done only once. So even though you might be able to use the red pill twice, or uh, you manage to get to rearm your, your bonus, or you actually jump more than once, uh, and three days you can't claim it twice. It's only once. I'm gonna go through all them all. Um, this round, uh, discard one coin. So at any point during the this round, you can actually discard a coin and get a zombird. Um, here, this one is a gift. You have nothing to do. Everybody gets a zombird. And this one, you, if you manage to bomb someone during the round, you manage to get a zombird. There's actually technically only three of those that comes every game because there is only three rounds and there is only once per round. So uh, all those are kind of provided for kind of replayability value and, and kind of, you know, renewing challenges and, and dares uh, during the stuff. How does it work? Uh, at the beginning of the game, everybody gets one zombird. So every, on top of having, you know, your uh, secret bonus, um, and uh, your voting tokens, you get a zombird. So everybody gets a zombird. Everybody. The zombirds can stay in your hand. Uh, they are permanently in your hand until you play so them. Let's go through uh, every possible uh, zombird to see what they do and how they behave. A zombird stays in your hand. It's a card that stays with you. Uh, every player gets one at the beginning of the game and then can obviously get new ones through the event as we just talked about. What do they do? Uh, this uh, zombie dinosaur help you steal uh, steal a zombie from from someone. This one enables you to make one, plus one zombie if you manage to play your bonus card. This one enables you to bomb someone. This one enables you to steal a coin. Oh, sorry, to uh, earn a coin. This is one is very really interesting. Basically, it gives you plus one zombie at the end of the game so everybody like think they know who's the winner but you can say eh, surprise plus two zombies i'm the winner this one helps you to save one zombie this one enables you to protect yourself against bombs someone is bombing you and you're like mm, nope you're not um these are interesting this gives you uh they don't give you physical Zombies and and in many ways this icon is wrong. We're going to change it. It's, it's a prototype. What it does, it gives you three virtual zombies to push a vehicle. So let's say that uh, your team that is missing, you know, I don't know, up to three zombies to push the vehicle. Well, you can say, well, I'm saving us and um, and make a screw with this. And then there is um, kind of five super zomb zomb zombird, <laughs> which we have uh, in stretch goal. <coughs> Uh, this one has been unlocked already uh, and it enables you to cancel uh, a zombird. So someone is playing something, you said, well, nope, you're not playing it. This one helps you steal a coin. This one gives you plus 10 zombies when you push a vehicle. This one uh, helps you save up to two zombies. And this one gives you two coins. That's it. And um, this layer of you know secrecy uh, and... Asynchronous interaction is, is, is very important for the gamers who play this game because uh, the the base game is is very shop centric when it comes to interaction and uh, and and this will give a little bit more surprise and tools for you to uh, grab the victory. Mm -hmm.